I'm Mitra Sorrells in the Focus Wire studio, and I am joined by John Morehouse. He is Chief Experience Officer at Flight Center Travel Group. Welcome, John. Hi, thanks for having me. So let's talk a bit about the new online platform at FCM. I know that um, there's also a new proprietary online booking tool. Tell us a little bit about that and, and why that is an innovative alternative in your view. Yeah, so uh, a couple years ago, you know, we decided that designing and controlling the full end-to-end uh, -end travel experience is really important for our business. We have, like, like most major TMCs, we have partnerships in the search and book area with a lot of preferred third parties, but we are seeing a need to be able to control a bit more of that search and book, that initial phase that travelers go through when they're securing their business travel. So, um, you know, COVID was a great excuse to pick up some great technology and some great companies. And we were able to acquire a company called Where2, uh, very innovative, modern online booking platform uh, that we fully integrated into our business now. Uh, so we call it FCM Booking. It's fully integrated into our overall platform strategy, our mobile application. It really gives customers a very modern, cutting edge option in some of the markets that we offer the tool compared to traditional third party tools. We still support them. So our motto with customers is not to tell you to go here or pick this solution or do it a specific way. It's all about flexibility and choice and what you want. And if you have the ability or the desire to be able to you know, do something a bit more modern in terms of its approach, then we've got an option for that. And did I hear you say, is it available to everyone or is it um, in certain markets or certain? Uh, right now we're launched in the US and Canada. Okay. Uh, we launch in the UK in January with our first customers. We have a couple beta customers on it now. And then we've got a plan in terms of additional countries that we roll out. I mean. We don't plan to roll it out. We operate FCM in nearly 100 markets globally. It's not a tool that will work in 100 markets globally. Right. We'll pick the markets based off of what our customers want us to, to go to uh, and, and kind of go that way with it. So, okay. But generally speaking, we see the majority of our customer spend concentrated to a couple of key markets, and that's yeah. probably where we'll focus the attention for the tool. So explain a bit more about what a corporate traveler could expect um, in their experience using FCM booking. Yeah, sir. So, um, First and foremost, it's a next generation storefront based display. So when we talk about our business, we look at our corporate customers as one customer segment. We also look at our supply customers as another key segment. And the more you talk with airlines, particularly having the ability to have a more modern retailing environment to be able to display multiple fare categories, different types of bundled services is quite key to their long term plans. So we su support all of those components with it. The tool is built off of another acquisition that we did of a company called TP Connects that does okay. NDC, low cost care and GDS aggregation. So the tool has one API to plug into and from that one API, it can get any range of content. So we're able to offer a lot of flexibility to our customers from a content perspective with it. Uh, and the same applies on the hotel side as well. Uh, approval flows are there. You know, we've got the ability to do guest travel, a, a lot of integrations to different virtual payment and payment products that we offer. So it's really meant to take the best of some of our service propositions and put them into a single product. And some of those integrations I talked about are difficult to do uh, with third parties at scale. Very interesting. Okay, so, you know, and speaking of uh, acquisitions, so you've also fully purchased Shep, uh, the browser extension startup. So what impact do you expect to see from that in the next year or so? How um, is that impacting your business? The, the Shep tool was a really important acquisition for us. Um, Daniel and his team, we had known for quite some time. We had a minority investment in the business going back a couple of years, and it complements our product offering quite well, because like I was saying earlier, our ethos is around flexibility. We right. allow customers to pick and choose the tools that work for them. When they choose to work with a third party product, there may be benefits and reasons why they do that. And there may be expense integrations or different types of content choices they choose to get from that third party product, but they're also sacrificing some levels of duty of care information right, or integrations right. to a different risk provider. So the Shep, we call it the browser extension, it's FCM extension, uh, allows us to bring those content pieces in. So from the actual browser window, when they're working with a third party tool, and it's not exclusive to online booking tools, it's usually and generally the biggest use case that we have, but it also works on any travel site. We're able to provide a lot of helpful hints and reminders as to what to do in the program. We're able to do um, things like with sustainability. We can show them the most sustainable option for a given list of uh, responses that come oh. back on flight searches, even if that tool doesn't support the ability to list out the most sustainable options. So things like that, we're able to kind of go through and do and bring our services into that third party environment. 
Interesting. So, you know, as you're talking about all of this, you know, clearly there's been these acquisitions have really been key to driving some of this innovation for Flight Center. I'm just wondering, you know, as you think about the future and investment in technology and what's next, I'd love to hear you tell me a little bit about what's happening there. And, and do you potentially see that also being driven by more acquisitions or is it more building on what you have? Yeah, our approach to acquisitions and investments um, really goes through multiple stages. Our first is kind of a commercial relationship with the company. We find a product that we like. Sometimes we find them here at the Focus you know, Focus Red event uh, and we partner with them to go through and provide a service. And if we really find value, we then move up a tier to like, in some cases, a minority investment. We'll put right. money into the business to help them grow. And then if that gets to a point where it's really successful, then we'll even look to go through and acquire. So we don't do it. We're not a venture capital firm. We're not right. out, you know, investing um, just for material return. We're actually looking to complement our product offering. So the acquisitions that we've done have been quite key. They are centered around our product ecosystem and the pieces that we have and we offer our customer base. So for us, it continues to be a ongoing process. We invest heavily with uh, our own teams to actually look at different startups in the market. Uh, a couple key partnerships that we have, like plug and play is probably one of the bigger ones okay. that we have, where we have them help us source some of the different uh, products that are out there and looking for companies to, to go through and bring into the portfolio and then can run through that entire process. Some of the acquisitions that we've done are huge success stories. Daniel and the team at Shep, they are double the size when we acquired them. Uh, Ryan and the team at Where2, they are over double the size yeah. now when we acquire them. So once we do those, bring those cornerstone pieces in, we then build on top. And in addition, we've got a lot of organic you know, growth as well. So yeah. both will be key to the story for us going forward, looking at those acquisitions strategically and then complementing them with their own investments. Okay, super interesting. So I guess, you know, as I'm thinking about the theme of the Focus Right Conference, of course, Travelers, Titans, Trailblazers. So Flight Center Travel Group has been around for many, many, many years, one of the largest global companies in the space, but also doing some innovative things as I'm hearing you talk about this. Would, do you, would you categorize yourself as a Titan or a Trailblazer? <laughs> uh, very difficult question to answer. Um, I'll probably go right down the middle and say <laughs> we're probably a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, in some aspects, because of our size, we certainly can command you know, some, some movement in the marketplace and within the tools and the technology providers that are out there. So probably a little bit of Titan-esque in some aspects. Yeah. Uh, and then because of the way that we approach innovation, which I really do think is quite unique in our space, uh, we're not afraid to, to be trailblazers as well. I mean, we, some of the investments that we made were first in kind. There are still first movers in some markets. You know, we had today, uh, one of the launch customers was pitching a browser extension. We've, we've acquired a company that did that two years ago. You know, so yeah. it's, we feel like we're trailblazers in some aspects as well. So, so yeah, I'll take You're the- You're kind of in that sweet I'll spot, I'll take the right? easy answer and go with both. Yeah, that's probably the ideal place to be, isn't yeah. it? You know, yeah, everybody's, be, yeah. yeah, what they're all aiming for. So yeah. wonderful. John Morehouse from Flight Center Travel Group. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, thanks.